And today I am talking with Christine Ashworth, who is a romance writer. And wow, I mean, I just can't even, um, you know, it, this, this, um, her creativity blows me away. And I'm excited um, for her to share her creative process uh, today. So Christine, without further ado, you want to introduce yourself to folks who might never um, have met you or read one of your books? Okay, um, I'm Christine. I've, uh, I started writing, well, let me back up. My father was a, a writer. He published over 350 novels in his lifetime, plus several, by several, I mean 50 or 60 nonfiction, all through wow. publishers, the big five at that time. Um, most of his novels came out between, uh, in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, he was writing series novels for houses. Um, so he wrote The Penetrator, Mac Bolan, um, that type of men's, they're called men's action series. I call them men's trashy novels, like romance or women's trashy novels. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so I had that, I had his process as a, Uh, an ideal to hopefully reach, but he would get up, nice. um, start writing, start working at nine in the morning. So all his kids were gone. We're, we're, we were off to school. He'd start working at nine in the morning. Now he did car columns. He did anything he could. He was a freelance writer uh, and wow. had three kids to raise. And my mom did not work. So um, he would basically write from nine to noon, take a lunch break, spend time with my mom. Then one to four, he'd write, he'd take a break after when we got, what well, was after, well, after we got home from school, but he'd take another break. And then after mm -hmm. dinner, he would write again until 11 o'clock and then watch the news and Johnny Carson. Um, I wow. learned later that he did his fresh writing at night when most of us were asleep and he did it, his editing in the morning and then all his businessy stuff he'd do in between times. So, <clears throat> so that's my background. When I started writing, um, I had been, I was working for a dot com company in 20, oh my gosh. 1999. Wow. That's a long time wow. ago. Um, and I ran into some like-minded people who were also writing. And we got together outside of work and started, I started working on a romance novel because it's what I read. I mean, my dad used to go to uh, used bookstores and look at all the Harlequin Presents novels. And he goes, he'd say, I, I'll take it from there to there. <laughs> And he'd wow. package them up and that would be my Christmas present from him. Um, so I knew romance very well. So I thought I could write it because, you know, he kept saying, you should write romance. So <laughs> that first novel took me about nine months, I think, in between working the day job. And then my husband and I took a trip to... Um, I know this is kind of long, but we took a trip to Paris. No, I love it. Our first trip, we only had five days, and that included travel on both sides. So we only had like, oh. three days plus jet lag in right. Paris. <laughs> and um, I had a, a friend of mine was staying in the house watching our boys for us. And little did I know, if only you know we had international calling plans like we do now. Right. Um, when I got home, we got home about one thirty in the morning and she said, Oh, by the way, don't bother going into work tomorrow. You don't have a job anymore. I'm like, what? <laughs> I got laid off from my dot com job while I was in Paris. Wow. If I had done that, I'd have stayed. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, who wouldn't have? Um, so that was that was my first opportunity to really settle down and start trying to write something. Um, I, my process is really 
I need, I need a character or two and I need to know their names. Mm -hmm. Um, I am a, they call them a pantser. I, I, I cannot, that's not true. I can plot. Mm-hmm. My dad taught me the easiest way to plot is you, you take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you fold it in thirds. Mm-hmm. First third is the first act. Second third is the second act. Third, third is the third act. So I try that when I'm really stuck. Um, but I'd like to know what it is, who, who I'm writing about and why I'm writing about them before I actually get started. So I'm one of those people that has to get into the world. Like, if, okay, if we're talking like a snow globe, I need to get inside the snow globe and go, oh, oh, oh this is what it's all about. Whereas other people have to walk around the slow, snow globe, plot out every single piece of the snow globe before they start writing. I have to be inside the snow globe before I start writing. Got you. So, um, I guess the best way to illustrate that would be jumping forward to 20, 2009, 2000, yeah, 2009. Um, Twilight was a big hit. Mm-hmm. It seems like the vampire novels were coming out of the woodwork. Um, and that, and that they were always good. The vampires were, yeah. always had a heart of gold. Um, shapeshifters, werewolves were really popular. Um, yep. I, I, I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. So I kind right. of thought, what can I do that's different? That's me. Um, and you had you had your hybrids you had your your um you know your werewolf vampire hybrid not, probably not but you know what i mean right, um, right, so I right. thought, well instead of a hybrid what about a tribrid Ooh, so yeah. i created this family called the cane the canes and uh and these i had these three brothers and their cousin no mom the mom died very tragically when the youngest was born um and the father stuck around until all the kids were old enough i mean as in over 18 and then he just Mm kind of disappeared so we've got Uh. these three these three men and uh i decided that they were they had demon blood human Mm -hmm. blood and fairy blood mm-hmm. and it's it complicated came huh this what? is complicated yeah <laughs> complicated it, it, did, <laughs> it did get it kind of complicated um but as i was writing what and what, the first book was called demon soul it was the original title i've changed the title it's fractured soul right now um he, mm-hmm. Gabriel left town 10 years ago, fairly soon after his dad left. And he's back now because a vampire <laughs> he knew uh, stole most of his soul. So he has got to get it back or he will become the demon inside him. So what actually happens with each of the books is the, the men have to learn how to make sure all of their gifts from their different bloodlines work together. So mm. Gabriel, he needs his soul back and to understand that his fairy part is just as strong as his demon part. The oldest brother, Gregor, uh, it's very straight laced, very uptight. He has just sort of canceled out both his demon and his fairy side. So he too has to bring them both together in order to save. And it's always in order to save the one they love. Right. Right. In order to, to be the hero, they have to, they have to reconcile all these forces with inside, inside them. And then the youngest brother, you no, know, the other brother, the middle brother, is um, 
Justin. <laughs> Justin was fun to write. I, I wrote the first two books and then I had a four year lapse because my publishing company stopped publishing and, and I had a oh. four year lapse before I wrote that third book. So I was able to go back and reread the other two and really pick out, oh, this will work. Oh, this will work. <clears throat> it's by the end of book two. Justin is is done, basically. He's got almost all his humanity leached out of him. So in oh. book three, he's got to find all that back. And the character that he's been bickering with since book one is his love interest in book three. So it was just that start of how can I make this different? That's yes. That's how it all got started. But basically, it's creative chaos. <laughs> that's my process. I love it. It's actually not um, chaotic at all. I'm I'm kind of loving how you inherited this um, very methodical process of treating this like work which i think oh. that a lot of creatives don't get that you know yeah yeah when i <clears throat> it's it's been hard writing i was um i had started a continuation series with side characters in the cane books to go on and um, I wrote that book mm -hmm. and half of the next one in 2018, but the circumstances around getting that published was in an anthology and the, <clears throat> the politics that went with that just mm. burned me out, burned me out. So by the end of the year wow. of 2018, I, I, I could barely string two sentences together. And I spent most of 2019 uh, healing from that, I guess. Plus, I had two very mm. long bouts of um, bronchitis, severe, severe bronchitis. So I was on a nebulizer. <laughs> you remember that, Mom, you know? <laughs> I do. I do. And, you know, if you can't breathe, I mean, you can't think, right? Yeah, it it really slows can. everything down. It's, yeah. So wow, this is so cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> so have you been writing in in our uh universal uh timeout? 2020 I had two under contract. It was for um a continuation series. So every book is a standalone book, but it's set in a different state so i had two of this of the letters um you you can't get the books anymore i was given the opportunity to either continue on this year or to back away and because of mm -hmm. some of the I, I i just didn't have the bandwidth to continue so i backed away and the books are down but they were key west kisses and um undone and oh that was the original title. Mm -hmm. uh, something in Utrecht. And uh, the, the first book was, I decided I was just going to go silly because it was early 2018. Everything was falling apart. I was already behind deadline. Um, but I just decided to go silly. So I did. And it was a lot of fun. And it was 35,000 words. But it was not easy. It was that was where that discipline came in. And I had <laughs> I had all these rituals I had to do. I had, Dorothy Morrison has a block, uh, 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 block, it's a spray that uh, removes yeah. blocks, creative blocks. So I'd yeah. spray my office and I'd spray <laughs> the doorway. <laughs> so when I walked in, it's like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And I, it was, but it was work. It was work. And the second one was worse. Um, the second one wasn't due until September, I think. And I dragged my feet and didn't even get started on it until July, which was not good for me. <clears throat> um, but I do get to work from home right now. Uh, I'm going on a year 
the 17th yeah. of March will be my year from work, of working from home um, at my day job. So, but it's, so that was 2020. I did get two books done. Um, I wasn't really happy with the second one. And I know I could have done better, but at the time I couldn't have done better. Right, right, right. So uh, that was another reason I had them taken down. Um, I hope I am. There is some, there was a twist to the world that yes. I've included in the books that in order to republish them, I have to take that out. So that's a lot of rewriting I have to do. Oh. <clears throat> so I don't know if those books will see the light of day again. <laughs> Yeah, you we'll know, see. it's interesting. Yeah. And, and it's funny that you say that because, you know, I write much shorter pieces, I write songs, and I throw out more than 50% of what I write before it ever sees the light of day. And I'm a firm yeah. believer in killing your children if they're if they're not you what to. you planned. Yeah. Yeah, you really have to, unless you're on deadline and have to turn it in. Right, them. right, right. <laughs> I see He's your muses one. with you. That's yes. awesome. He's 15 and he's got a, a box on the corner of my desk. Hey, sweetie. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Helps you write, I'm sure. Wow. So where do you get the ideas for your characters? Do they show up or is it something that you really go after? I mean, where do you meet them? Where do I meet them? That's a good question. Um, I like knowing that the characters I create are somebody you'd want to spend time with. Um, yeah. and, and that I like, and I can understand their motivations and why they do what they do. And, but where do I meet them? Um, Good question. Uh, sometimes I'll take <clears throat> two or three characters from TV shows and mash them together uh, oh, and cool. see if that sticks. Sometimes I'll just, this kind of drives my husband crazy, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we'll be, we'll be driving along and we'll see something, somebody do something and, or somebody in a car doing something silly. And I'll say, well, you know, they have to do that because they're on their way to the emergency room because their daughter-in-law is about to give birth to triplets and he promised his wife he'd be there because she can't be there and the you know you just I just start right <clears throat> so it, it it and that's the improv <laughs> I took improv so that's the improv trained in me to do I I, I, I really that. don't have a good time sorry no 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 I think that's great I mean. I mean, I, I don't understand the process of writing fiction at all. And I say that knowing full well that most people would consider the voices in my head to be fictional, but, <laughs> you know, um, but I don't understand the process at all. I can write nonfiction because I can tell you how to do something and break down all the steps, but to write something from just whole cloth, just boom, here is this magnificent story. It it amazes me every time. And and I love the fact that you have this process and 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 that you're doing it while you have a day job. I mean, that's just crazy to me. Um, because I always feel like a day job squelches my creativity. Interesting. Yeah, and you know, you're not wrong. Um my dad has been trying to get me, my husband's been trying to get me to write since I was in my early twenties. Um, and I, because I always had a day job, I felt like, okay, you need to go into your corner. I felt like I, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't do the, uh, do the writing. <clears throat> yeah. I fed you, you're being a pain. Um, you're talking to somebody you must be talking to. Yeah. Him. I'm talking to the cat. Um, so it wasn't until I got laid off in Paris <laughs> that mm -hmm. it, you know, I, I went on unemployment immediately, which is 
it is what it is. My husband and I right. sat outside one night and talking over a glass of wine and he was, so what do you want to do now? I said, you know what I really want to do? I want you to get the day job and I want to write. <laughs> and bless his heart because yeah. he's an actor. And um, he, he is IT certified and all that kind of stuff. So he ended up getting a job and supporting the family for a decade while I tried to wrangle my writing career. And so from, wow. let me see. And then in 2005, I thought I need to get a job. <laughs> I can't handle this being <laughs> home all the time. Um, <laughs> and I wasn't, I was producing, I was producing, but I wasn't, I, I think I wrote a book or two a year during those years. That's high output. So I'd write them. I'd write them and I send them out to, to agents and editors and I'd get absolutely no response. Mm. That's because I wrote a book or two in a year. I did not edit a book or two in a year. Got you. I just wrote them. I didn't Got edit you. them. So, so when I came around with this demon idea, I think that first chapter changed probably six times before I got it right. Uh -huh. And then the, uh, the character names changed several times before I got them right. And when I got the first draft done, it's like, okay, <clears throat> now I better go through it again. Uh -huh. So I went through it again and I started, as I started reading through it, I realized that something I'd written in chapter three, three or four should have been picked up in chapter nine or 10, but wasn't. So I was able to, now I, now editing is my favorite part. I don't like the first draft. I like editing because you get to layer. It's kind of like writing a song where you yep. take out the bits that don't work and then you just layer yes. the meeting in same thing yes. you're just layering in uh you're you're, you're coloring mm, no you're blending the colors in the manuscript you're blending the personalities yes. and you're blending the, the you're making sure making sure they have clothes on um uh, i tend to start with talking <laughs> heads and nobody's nobody has nobody's got furniture around and nobody's sitting nobody's got clothes on so like, oh, Christine, okay, you really have to get better at this. So, and, <laughs> and I, I, I sold that, well, I guess I could say sold. I sold that first demon book to Crescent Moon Press in 2010. Um, nice. It was a, it was an online pitch session and they wanted your, really? they wanted your three line pitch and your first hundred words. And the note that I got back from the editor, um, who was, um, ah, her name's Heather. I forget her last name. Sorry, Heather. Um, the note I got back from her was hated your three line pitched, loved your first hundred words. Send me the first three chapters nice so that, nice. yeah so that was they contracted for two books and so that's why i got those two books done and then um they never said anything and heather ended up leaving the company and um she worked with liz pelletier to start entangled Pr press so yeah it was it was really pretty cool to have them on my side when I first started. And then they, they veered off and I stayed with Crescent Moon and then Crescent Moon stopped producing. So it wasn't mm. until um, Wolfpack Publishing who had picked up my dad's books, <clears throat> the ones he had the rights back to, he, they picked those up 2012, I think 2013 and started putting them on Amazon. It, oh. And um, thankfully made my dad the most money he's ever made ever off writing. 
Uh, <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it. Because he was, my mom had died by that point, and he was kind of hurting. There was no new contracts were coming through. And um, so when Wolfback came to him and said, hey, you want us to put your backlist up? You you know, we'll, we'll split royalties or whatever. And he said, sure. Mm-hmm. He gave him like 65 bucks. And uh, about two years in, he was making five figures a month. What a legacy. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was awesome. Because for the first time in his, in his early eighties, he could pay any bill that came through right away. Oh, it didn't have to wait. He said, I have never been in this position before. It's amazing. Wow. So that's nice. That's yeah. really, really nice. Yeah. I don't oh know how gosh. I got on that, but um... no, but that's, that's oh. you know what a what a role model to have in your life um i i think that so many of us who create we're like the only ones in our immediate environment that do and we have no way to learn focus other than just to go into it and figure it out on our own and what a what a wonderful thing to have to have your dad as a role model and that legacy of his writing and you picked it up so finely i mean it's that's just amazing to me oh thanks yeah he was he was as he said the only thing i can know how to do is write and garden gardening won't pay the bills (laughs) right (laughs) Uh, so uh, every every single month the last four years of his life, he wrote 50,000 words a month on a new novel every single wow. month. Yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. That's beautiful. I guess so. Wow. So, um, in retrospect, this, this question just popped in my head, which is where these things go. <laughs> um, in retrospect, the books that you've written, let's use use the Cain brothers as an example. Do you go back to those and and then sometimes realize that you're reflecting things that were going on in your life at, during that time, or do your characters really have lives of their own, separate and apart from yours? They really have lives of their own. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> uh, it yeah the 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 first book in this spinoff series is called the hidden one they're all down well Mm -hmm. i put up um the first cane book is back up i got all the rights back and i haven't done the work to put them back up but i I will Mm -hmm. this year i have to because i've been saying my to myself for two years now you really got to put those back up um anyway the hidden one has um it opens with the lead female smelling demon at her door, at her bedroom. Door. Oh. So I've never done that. <laughs> I mean, it's, Got you. <laughs> um, but she rolls out of her bed and is out the window before the demon comes charging in after her. So it's, and she's a witch. But she's a she's a witch and she can shoot fire and do all the neat witchy things that we witches in this world wish we wish we could do. Um, right. And so, so long story to answer that question. Um, sometimes, sometimes, but rarely. Um, yeah I, I, that makes sense that makes sense I mean I would lie if I would say if I, I, I if, if I said that there was no part of me in any of the books there's obviously parts of me in, right. in the books no one's going to know which which parts they are which is fine yeah gotcha but that's, <laughs> that's you know there are parts of you in all your songs yeah, actually, for me, it's sometimes I don't even see it when I'm writing it. And then two years later, I hear a song and I go, 
wow, that's like totally parallel to what was going on when I wrote that and I didn't even know it. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely in my music in in a myriad of ways. Um, it, I, I, I love your style um, and and I just love your approach because there's a, there's a method to it. And I, sometimes that's what I feel that I'm really missing. Um, this year I've been honing my method and really putting the time in on a regular basis. And um, I feel like I'm learning all the things that I didn't know because I am doing it every single day. I'm at my craft every day. Um, and that discovery, you know, of, like, like what you were talking about editing where you were writing, but you weren't editing. Um, you know, I've been writing music forever but it's rare that I go into the studio and actually produce it out. And that's what I've been doing this past year. And in doing so, I feel like I've upped my game considerably because I'm just doing it every single day instead of writing a song and then driving for two weeks and talking to people and playing festivals and not really sitting down other than to play on stage, which that's like, the culmination of it that's or the cd being done that's the culmination right. of it but the craft is in is in the creativity and the writing every day and learning nuances and learning new ways of doing things and learning new chord progressions and learning you know music theory that i never learned before and all of that kind of thing and i would imagine that that um you having to focus on the writing after you after you lost the day job and deciding must have changed your approach in a lot of ways. Oh, it, it, it gave me an approach, <clears throat> but it also pointed out how little discipline I really had because for mm -hmm. the first time in, okay, so that was, I was 41. So the first time in 20 years, yeah, 15 years, I was not getting up to go to a job. I was getting up to yes. children instead. That was different. <laughs> yeah, that was really different. Uh, and when they were away at school, it was me and the computer. And I learned about dual time and I learned about online solitaire, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Facebook wasn't a thing yet. So I, there was no social media really in, in 2001 to, uh, to dabble on, but I found lots of ways to procrastinate. And none of them included cleaning Distraction. Out. Yeah. <laughs> none of them included cleaning I love cleaning. it. You know, three years ago, I started doing this thing every Lent. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm a lapsed Catholic by a long shot. Um, but three years ago for, for Lent, I started doing this thing of deleting all the games off of my phone and off of my computer. Um, and focusing, redirecting my focus towards my music. So if I sat down at my computer, I was doing something that had to do with my travel or my, or my bookings or my music in some way. And after Lent, slowly the creep would start. Oh, I'm just going to put that game on. And, you know, by the time Lent rolled around again, I realized I'm spending... You know, because you can have that thing where it tells you how many hours a day you just spent playing Candy Crush, yep. right? Which that's a scary thing when you realize how much time. I don't want to be an expert at Candy Crush. I want to be an expert at writing music. <laughs> and the time you put in is is what gets you where yeah. you where you're going, right? Yeah. Um, and and so every Lent I have retrained my focus and. Uh, it's it's become an annual thing for me to to reach so right now there are no games in my life um but there is still facebook and i don't know how to get off of that because i use it to connect to 
people in a way that I can't in any other way yep. during COVID. So yeah. it that is still a distraction, but the games are not the distraction right now, which is funny. I'm going to have to try that. I've got um, the Happy Color app on my phone. And I nice. love it because there are no in-app purchases. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. <laughs> and I also love it because I'm learning... Yes, it's a huge time waster. I'm, I agree. But I'm learning more about color. I'm learning nice. more from an art artistic perspective because they have some of the old um, artists, like uh, Van Gogh's uh, Cafe Street, the street yeah. with the light and the. That one took forever to do but when you look <laughs> at the whole thing and you see how the colors blend and it, it's it's like an arts education you can't really get any other way so that's how i justify it to myself actually I no i i totally get that because i find that the time that i spend away from my music in other creative pursuits always enhances my my primary yeah. creative pursuit which is music um i worked with polymer clay almost daily for about seven years oh, wow. and i oh, absolutely great. loved it what yeah 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 it's and i loved it i loved working with it i'm not in an environment right now where i can do that you really need pet free if you're gonna do that because the hair gets in the polymer clay and it's a nightmare um, but I did it for about seven years daily while I was a musician, but just also working in the clay and the color theory and the, just the meditative process of doing something other than music, but with my hands physically. Yeah. Yes. That, that, yes, there's something about, and I'm, I don't ever consider myself a physical artist in any way, but I actually did some lovely pieces because I worked at it every day. Yeah. And um, I think that it changed my perception of my music in some ways by having that in tandem with, there were things that I created in the clay that came alive in my imagination that became songs. And it, the other way around, there were songs that I wound up creating in the clay. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, this, Happy Color app has some really evocative images of space suited up people on a planet, you know, one's leaning against the car, one's kicking the tire, another one's tinkering with something over there. Or there's this one where there's, she's obviously on this planet and she's taking her suit off so you can see her, uh -huh. her hair. But it, the planet is pretty dead looking and you can see all these things coming out of her back. And it's just the stories that get going in my mind are nice. Amazing. Now, I haven't written any of it down, but, you know, when I'm coming off of 2018, I was just so burned that I couldn't. We talked about that at the festival. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. Um, creating was really a struggle I felt like there were no story like it, that part of my brain had just sort of shut down and so so anything even if it feels like a time waster anything that can get your brain going creatively again is a blessing if you can't yes. dig your hands into the soil <laughs> and do some like gardening, gardening yes um yeah yeah so, yeah, I can see where Clay would do that for you. It really did. It really did. And, yeah, gardening does it, too, except that I'm in Florida um, where gardening is uh, something that I like to do for about six weeks out of the entire year. Yeah. <laughs> it's Because the heat is just too much for me. It's, it's great here. Um, the hard parts are, this, are the windy, hot summer days where... You know, if you don't get out before eight in the morning, you're going to 
not, you're not going to do it. Um, right. We have last year we put in, um, oh, what are those hoses with drip lines? We put in a drip line in our, some of our beds. Yeah. That helps so much. I can't even, it's like, oh, wow, water. <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> right right uh so we're we're gearing up to do that again but luckily we've had rain a couple days cool. this last week so nice and see that makes me immediately think about the drip lines that we need to install in our own lives to keep ourselves watered and fed and growing and you know what's the, what is that drip line what does it look like you know it's yeah. for me right now it's take it's it's having it's it's having a goal which is you know getting the cd done mm -hmm. um and, and a deadline but it's also um the classes that i take or the tutorials that i that i you know go hunt down to learn how to do a new thing i mean that's that's like my lifeline that's my drip line right now because if i didn't do all those other things and it was just music in a vacuum i don't know if i could do it yeah yeah yeah. Uh, well, you know me in classes. I tend to overburden myself with too many, and then I I drop out of all of them. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Which is why I was so grateful to take the the beginner tarot class with you and actually stick with it, even though seven o'clock in the morning, woman, on a Saturday. I know. Really, I was so grateful to see your face. Thank you <laughs> for saying so. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, my that, other that time math will get us every time between California and Florida. Right? <laughs> Man. Um, my other um, drip line, I guess you could say, is I have a, a group that I meet with. Um, yes. No, they meet with me. <laughs> it's my group uh -huh. um, called Retreat and Refresh. And we meet the first Saturday of the month for meditation and it's mostly people from um northwest tarot symposium and um yeah i have not yet dragged anyone in from festival very um, cool very cool it, it's it's a thought so yeah we we do meditation sometimes we'll pull cards and just talk on that level that i i can't talk about a lot of that stuff with just anybody so it's nice having that connection. Yeah, I hear you. I, th I, I found an interesting drip line recently, and it's more, it's something that I've never, never tried before. Um, January was a real fallow month for me. And I know that fallow times can be useful for things, but January, I had already had self-imposed deadlines to meet in order to get to my you know late spring release from my cd and in january i met none of those deadlines i literally was getting up putzing all day not doing what i should do to reach my goals and then by the end of january i thought i will not have a cd if i don't do something about this and i reached out to a women's music community um and said i need an accountability partner and the young lady that um, uh, that uh, volunteered, we've been talking to each other. Uh, we were talking to each other twice a week, and we've just now brought it down to once a week because that's what we need right now. Um, and we tell each other what our goals are, you know, and we if we have something that's going on, we talk about it. But they're, I think the most time I've ever spent with her is 15 minutes on a, on a call. But mm -hmm. once or twice a week, making me accountable to a stranger, although she's not a stranger anymore, but it's the weirdest thing. I don't understand the psychology of it and why it works. But like right after our first meeting, I was like, okay. And I was back on track, man. And that's become a thing that I actually need yeah, in order to keep going, you know, and, it's it's the most bizarre thing to me. I don't understand why it works. <laughs> I have a theory. Um, I'd love to hear it. In this time of not being able to connect, um, 
by January. I mean, I, I don't think a lot of my, let me put it this way. A lot of my friends did nothing in January um, because it's like, gotcha. uh, I mean, with everything that went on politically aside, there is still that yeah. like new year, but we still can't go anywhere. Um, right. You know, it's still not safe. We're still not vaccines still haven't gotten out and about we're not you know we're still stuck so i think having that person that you didn't know very well at the beginning come into your life and say hey you know where are you on your list is right. something that fit this extraordinary time you know, it's something that you, you might have gotten that in a different way had the world been different. True, but, true. But you, you, and you might not have needed it, but because we were all undergoing a lot of fatigue and PTSD from this last year and, and all that other thing, I think you did the hard work. You reached out and said, I need help. You know, and mm -hmm. that is the hardest work to do. That's what most of us won't do. So that you took that step. Just having that other person is like almost secondary because you took that first step. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it was it was definitely an, an intention placed out into the universe that said, I'm not. I'm not doing the things I said I was going to do. And I think you're right about January um, because I wasn't, I, I know I wasn't the only one, but yeah, that, that frustration of I can't do anything. Therefore I'm going to rebel and not do anything. Bingo. You know, it's, it's like, it's like, fine. You tell me I can't do anything then I'm not going to do anything at all. I've and... been a good girl for all this time. <laughs> so now I'm not going to be a good girl. So there. <laughs> right. Right. So there, so there. Um, but yeah, that's um that's interesting. Um, yeah, I like this uh this whole concept of drip lines, feeding our, <laughs> watering our our creative flow, our creative souls here. I like it. I like it. Yeah, we'll, we'll I'll use any tool I can find at this point to get me across the finish line. I also, you know, you have an editor that you trust, right? Yes. Do you have, do you work with an editor that you trust? And I think that's so important to have somebody else at some point in the process that is going to help you. And I am the girl who does everything by myself. I don't want anybody's help. I'm going to do this by myself. Boom, boom, boom. And this that just a few weeks ago, actually, in order to step up my game, I hired a mix coach. Um, to help me um, fine tune what I've been learning for the last year in mixing and everything else. And I realized that I could put out a decent musical product, but I really want to put out a really good musical product and my skill set's not there. And I could hand it to somebody else and say, just do the work. But that's not what I wanted. I still wanted to do all the work and I wanted to learn in the process. And so I I uh, reached out to a friend of mine that does mixing and all this kind of stuff to get the music ready to really be in the world. And I said, so I want to hire you, but not to mix my CD. I want you to coach me and teach me um, what I need to do to get to the next level. And that has also been one of those drip lines Absolutely. Because now I have to be accountable to that whole process as well. You know, as soon as as soon as I get notes back from him, I've got to take care of the things, right? Or make decisions uh, yeah. about them and send it back to him. And it's it is um, it is an editing process. And yeah. what you said about now that's your favorite part. I am kind of loving this. I, I have crushing doubt at times as to why I'm even doing this. <laughs> I get it. I mean, how many things do I have to fix? Oh my gosh, I'm not cut out for this. I'm just going to go back to playing guitar around a fire. Oh wait, <laughs> I can't do that yet. <laughs> the crushing doubt is like, oh, so bad. But um, 
yeah, it's it's holding me accountable. And I know that I said it all in process. You know, it's not coming from somebody else. Because yeah. if I said, we're not going to do this tomorrow, he'd just go, okay, that's that's yep. your call, right? Yep. Um, but I'm finding that I'm really loving this part of the process and I never thought that I would like it. It's very bizarre. But it's, it's where you take... Okay, it's kind of like you have you've gathered all the cake ingredients and you've mixed them together. But you don't have an oven temperature yet. You don't have a pan. <laughs> you know, you don't yep. you don't have a timer. So getting having that person help you learn how to mix. <clears throat> it's yes. like all the editing classes I ever took um help a lot but I still need an editor, you know? I mean, I can self edit, yeah. but nobody can catch all the mistakes in their own work. And I don't care what you're doing. Yes. It's just yes. not. Fun. Because you're, so. you're too close to it. If you're in the exactly. snow globe, you can't tell what people are seeing outside the snow globe. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, I yeah, can. you can't see the two thes or, you know, the 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 sound on on the sound level on the bass is a little too high and it's drowning out your voice you you know right. you don't necessarily hear that um, right because i hear my voice my, in my head anyway right yeah my husband's been doing um book narration so he's <sighs> nice very uh he, he's he's taught himself a lot along the way and is his drip lines are YouTube videos and working with other book narrators to get their tips and tricks. So yeah, there's, uh, yeah, it's good. I'm glad you, you're, <laughs> I'm, is. Glad, I'm glad you're doing the, you're getting that, that, uh, coaching. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. And, and it's, it's necessary because, you know, creativity, the, the flow itself, is a wonderful thing and I, I do it like I breathe. But if I want to share that with other people, I would love for it to be in a shape, in a sound, in a on the page, however it appears to others so that they can ab absorb it. Yes. You know, so that they are it, it in a form that makes them want to receive that. Yes. And I guess that's, that's, you know, because you're right. I mean, I could hand them a bowl of batter, right? <laughs> Not cooked. Oh, well, go for it. <laughs> and go, look what I made. <laughs> you're right, right, right. <laughs> and it'll taste kind of good. And if you put enough sugar in it, it's going to taste really, really good. But it's not the cake. Right. Nope. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So, Christine, what are you working on these days? Are you working on anything at the moment? No. <laughs> no, I'm Anything not. In your um, head? No, that's okay. The fallow I, times, I, we need them just as much as we need the other. Yeah. But I need to get back in gear. I mean, I've, I have all these books I have to put back up online. I've got that side series I need to finish. I've got a book and a half written. Mm -hmm. I need to finish the second book and write the third. Um, I've got a nonfiction book I'm working on, a new nonfiction book I'm working on. Cool. Yeah. Um, cool. and, but I haven't, I don't know if I'm just being lazy or what, but I, it's been hard for me to get it going this year. Yeah, really I hear you. I think it's it has been for for everybody. It's 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 been interesting. The whole world has slowed down, and so it's it's hard to keep going in the midst of all of that. Um, I too find that um, if I have things that don't have to do specifically with my creative flow, that have more to do with bookkeeping, bookkeeping, accounting, 
um, website maintenance, um, you know, reaching out to start booking for next year, all the stuff mm -hmm. that creatives like me really hate to do. And maybe, maybe for you, it's that getting all of those books re, you know, up on the platforms and everything, because that's tedious. You already wrote the books. It's like, it's yeah. not about writing it's, but it is about sharing. And I find that sometimes if I have a whole bunch of those things on my plate, I literally can't make music until I get those things off my plate. And it's, for me, it's a block yeah. because I feel like. I'm not being productive, but that's the, if I can get those things off of my plate, that's the very thing that's going to make me productive. I don't know how that works for you, but I know that the thing that can get me stuck is, oh, I have this thing that I have to do at three o'clock this afternoon, and I can't possibly put my head anywhere else all day until I do the thing at three o'clock. It's crazy. <laughs> that, well, but I understand it. Um, yeah, I think, I think that is part of it because it's not, I have to rewrite the blurbs to the books. They never sold really well. They're, they're well written, they were well reviewed, but they never sold really well. And I think part of it was having demon in the title. It didn't read love story, you know? <laughs> um, so I've changed that up. Uh, I have new covers uh, and I have to write, rewrite the back matter, the, the, the blurb that is shown on Amazon, the, what you see before you actually buy the book. I have to do right. all that rewriting. Then I have to, and this is a really have to, um, not only assign um, an ISBN number, which I went out and bought a lot of them, so it's not an issue, right, right, right. but it's actually doing it. And then filling out the paperwork for the copyright. And that can be a hundred bucks a book. So yeah. it's, it's that busy work that I don't have a system for yet. And I really need to create one. And I don't, I had a, a an author's assistant for a while, a personal assistant. Mm -hmm. She got me through 2018. I mean, with all the marketing I had to do for that, anthology which right. really broke me um she did the bulk of that but and she probably could do the other stuff too i trust mm -hmm. her that much mm -hmm. but she's gone on she's also a writer and she's hiring other people to do the pa being for her so um i kind of we kind of mutually agreed to stop doing that she was amazing and i adore her to bits um but it's almost like you need not a social secretary, but you need somebody to do the bookings for you to do all the other stuff that yeah, if I, and, and, and you said it, the magic word, it comes down to trust. Absolutely. Finding someone I trust with my stuff, you know, uh, and, but it is going to have to happen at some point. Outsourcing is going to have to happen for some stuff. Yeah. Um, going forward. But um, we'll see. We'll see where it lands, right? Yeah. <laughs> because it gets it gets in the way. All that other stuff gets in the way of actually creating. Well, for me, you know, I took I went to Romance Author Mastermind, which was a, a conference just for romance writers. No editors, no agents, nobody from the industry. Sky Warren put it on, and. It wasn't your typical conference in that you had four or five things to choose from each hour. Mm -hmm. All 300 of us were in one room. We all saw the yes. same speakers. We all got the same information. We all were able to ask questions. We, they talked money. They talked how, time, how to divide your time up. And one of the things Sky does, I could be getting this wrong, if so I apologize, Sky. Um, but for a while, she would spend uh, four hours marketing, and then she got it to the point where it can it could come down to like two hours a day marketing, and then the rest of the time she would be creative. And she 
built in because she burned out early on doing too much too fast so she built in downtime um i don't think she works weekends nice. at all anymore um bless her wow. <laughs> i wish i could do that well technically i am doing that because i'm not doing anything right now but um <laughs> but if you can my my point is that if you can get those non-creative tasks that you you have to get done and it, it's it's a technique i call swallowing the frog so that thing that you really yes. don't want to do do first thing in the morning swallow that yeah. frog first thing in the morning right. and and then you've yeah. you've cleared that off and you can go about your day <clears throat> so um though sky says marketing is creative we're just not looking at it that way because it's taking this your product, true. it's taking something you created and making it appealing to the masses, which is a very creative, I mean, advertising is creative. It has to be, you know, to catch it on. is, And I know that it's a mindset. I know that it's a mindset. Um, I struggle with it every day. <laughs> Me too. Listen, this has been, Christine, this has been so amazing. And oh my gosh, I am so grateful. Um, not just not just that you volunteered this, but to do this, but it's just so nice to see your face and your smile. And and Aww. I miss I miss that. I miss you, honey. Hopefully, hopefully uh in the future, after shots and all that good stuff, uh, we can meet down the road again. That would be so lovely. Oh, I'm counting on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what One is way your or another? <laughs> <laughs> right. So what is your website? Uh, it's Christine dash Ashworth.com. Excellent. I will make sure and put that um, in the show notes. But that's 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 one of those things that, you know, I haven't been keeping up with either. It's okay. At so least people it's very will be pretty. able to find you. <laughs> And folks will be able to find yes. you through there and and reach out to you if they yes. if they want to learn more about your books and all that good stuff. Or on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Excellent. The girl Excellent. in the laughing hat. No. Yes, you are. The laughing girl in the hat. I like the <laughs> laughing hat. <laughs> the girl in the laughing hat. I kind of like that. <laughs> I love you ladies so much. Um, oh, I love you too, honey. Well. Please be well, stay safe, and um, let's get all the non-creative stuff out of the way so we can get back to the flow. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah, I promise. Install some install some drip lines. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This so is so much awesome. Thank you.